Hello, uh, welcome back to Be A Creative. This week I am coming at you with a super quick upcycling project. I was deep cleaning my craft room and I mean like deep cleaning, it needed it, it was so bad. And I found this random stash of ideology products that I had completely forgotten that I had purchased. It was probably years ago before I even knew what I was going to do with it. Really, before even I knew what I was doing, I, like, I had no idea. Uh, I'm sure some people out there can relate. If that's you, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Do you have random stuff that you bought before you knew what you were doing? What do you do with it? I would love, maybe share that. Give some, some fellow subscribers some ideas, or at least let me know I'm not the only one. Anyway, I'm like, what do I want to do with this? And I was re-watching my video from last week, and I said in my video last week that I don't art journal because of all well, for a lot of different reasons, I'll be honest. A lot of it is because I feel overwhelmed by all the blank pages. It's like I'll never finish it. So I'm like, hmm, what if I art journaled in a binder style where I could like pull a piece of paper out and then art journal on that just like I do my tags because it's practically the same thing. So I'm like, how fortuitous, I found this little book and that's exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to decorate it first. So what you're seeing me do is cut up some gel plate prints. You may recognize some of these. They're ones that we've made together on the channel and uh, they, I just haven't used them up yet. This is also, I think, a really good way of using up some of those gel plate prints. This particular print was uh, done on a 5 by 7 gel press. So what you saw me do was just cut off little white bits that weren't going to fit because uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this and maybe you have one of these little worn binders in your stash that chipboard cover is exactly five by seven inches I know because I measured like three times I wanted to be, be able to give you the correct information also my husband helped me because math mm, mm -mm, right that's all I need to say about that just because math so instead of painting over top of this, which if you wanted to do this, you totally could do, I would just suggest putting down probably a pretty thick layer of gesso because the cover of that worn binder kind of has like a little fuzzy feel to it. It's not just straight paper or chipboard. Uh, I decided that it would, I wanted to use up those gel plates, so I am laying everything down with a pretty thick layer of gel medium. I'm going to have a lot of layers and I don't want this to kind of start peeling up. So I made sure to hit the edges with actually both collage, distress collage medium when I laid down that first five by seven piece. And now like you can see, I'm just saturating everything with gel medium. I don't want anything coming up because I'm imagining I'm like, you know, uh, speaking something into existence here that I'm going to be pulling this art journal off the shelf quite a bit and I don't want all my collage things getting caught and ripping up <laughs> but we'll you know what we'll see if that actually happens <laughs> I don't know how many of you guys like make stuff and then never use it I'm really bad about that I actually love to make little books and journals and stuff and then I never use them I don't feel guilty about it because sometimes the process is the purpose. And if you are watching this and maybe, maybe you needed to hear that, it's okay just to enjoy making something and then having no functional use for it whatsoever. I will give you permission to be okay with that. You may have noticed that I did cut that stamp in half. That's okay. Uh, I just needed a little bit more control over where I was going to stamp the artist journal sentiment that is going to clearly tell myself, because who else is going to see this, that this is in fact an artist journal in case maybe I was ever going to question that. Now I'm taking a little bit of Dina Wakely paint and I'm applying it through a stencil. Uh, I wasn't crazy about this. I, at this point when I was doing this, I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about this. I guess the answer to that is just to keep doing more of it. Like, <laughs> more cowbell. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get copyrighted. I See here, I am. I'm not crazy about this at all. And I, I was seriously considering actually just covering the whole thing with gesso and starting over. But then I was like, you know what, let's just see what some stamping will do. I have some Distress Archival Ink and it's another Dina Wakely stamp. And this, I see, I was super excited. I saved it. There was something about this green. I believe that color is peeled paint, but as always, check the description box that kind of tied everything together. Also, I think it's because of the repetition in the, uh, the stamp. Adding the same continuous repetition helps kind of tie everything together. And as you can see, there's absolutely no white space. There's also not a lot of uniformity, which, which is kind of like, it's just messy. I'm sorry, I ran out of artist words. It's just messy and really, you know, it's just messy. 
I didn't realize how much I had kind of come to appreciate white space. And looking back on a lot of the tags that I've been doing, a lot of them have white space or at least white paint to give the illusion of white space. I really appreciate that. So I think that's kind of, kind of contributing to some of my mixed feelings about the cover. However, as soon as I lay down these orange circles, I'm like, boom, yes, this is what I'm talking about. I know last week I said I was going to try not to use the circles anymore. Um... I think they're here to stay. I just love them too much. I, I do. They're like perfect. And that cheddar color goes with everything. It, I'm just going to have to accept that. So I've got all of my little sentiments glued down. And while that is drying, I'm actually going to go ahead and make my first little art journal page. So you see to the right, there is a little uh, piece of paper that I have cut down that says, don't throw this away because I totally will, that has all of the measurements. So this part of the video is me literally just creating a super quick collage uh, art journal page for my very first page. It's, I mean, you can watch me do this. I'm, I'm not even using paint for the back. Background. I'm going to use stamps. However, I wanted to talk to you about the size of paper that you will need to add to your art journal if you decide to do this on your own. I took an eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock and cut it down. Well, okay, my husband did this. I was totally going to take all the credit for the math, but no, it was my husband. So thank you. Um, you're going to take an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and cut it down to four and a half inches by six and seven eighths. I know that is the most complicated, ridiculous number, but really the seven just didn't look right. So then to put the holes in, as you can see in this particular page, I've already, uh, done the holes. You're going to measure from the top at two inches and five inches. He actually makes a uh, binder hole punch for this particular little binder. So if you have that, then this will already be measured for you. I placed the holes a half inch from the edge of the paper. Uh, in retrospect, though, I'm thinking that would probably be better at three eighths of an inch instead of a half inch, just to make it a little bit easier to fold. Once I get this kind of cleaned up, I will be more than happy to scan it and upload it to my Flickr account so you guys will have a little template. If that's something that you're interested in, definitely let me know. But here it is, our first little art journal page, which fits nicely inside, and our finished art journal. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey, here's some more videos that you might like, and please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so that you can see more of my content.